in 73, we essentially want to convert 6.7 grams of this compound into moles. So first we need to find its molar mass and they helpfully give us the atomic weights here. We could always get those from the periodic table if we needed them. So let's first find the molar mass. So it's Na2, so that's 23 times two. That's 46 for the Na's, 12 times two, that's 24 for the carbons, and then 16 times four, that's 64 for the oxygens. Go ahead and add this up, 10, 14, and then 10, 12, 13. So molar mass is 134. What then would be the number of moles? I mean, you could probably get rid of a number of options here. It's not A, it's not B, it's not C, because I only have 6.7 grams and the molar mass is 134. And you might be able to you know, narrow it down from there. But to find the molar mass, I would just divide the number of grams by the grams per mole. And you might see that 6.7 times two is 13.4. 13.4 is 10% of 134, and so 6.7 must be 5% of 134, or this must end up getting you 0 0.05 mole. Now, if that math is too hard for you to do in your head, or you know it's just complicated, you'll probably be able to eliminate down to the answer because again, A, B, and C are too big. 0.1 mole would be if you had 1 tenth, that would be if you had 13.4 out of 134, but obviously we don't have that. We have half of that. So you might be able to eliminate down to E if the math is a little bit too tricky. But I think on more modern tests, I don't know if the math would be that tricky. So, you know, I think it should be fine uh, for most tests in the future. 74, 90 grams of glucose is dissolved in enough water to yield 200 mils of solution. What is the concentration of glucose? Well, we know its molecular weight is 180. So if I divide my 90 grams of glucose by 180, this is a little bit of an easier calculation to make. I find that I've got half a mole, 0.5 mole of glucose. Remember that molarity is moles over liters, moles over volume. So it's gonna be 0.5 moles over. Now this is 200 milliliters, converting that to liters, that's 0 0.200 liters. So I'm gonna put this over 0 0.200 liters. Do a little rearranging, um, basically, just move this over one decimal point, right? This is the same thing as five over two when you move a decimal point over. And so we're gonna get five halves, which is 2.5 molar. And so for this one, we're gonna get to choice D. Again, math may be a little bit tricky on that last part, but you know, as long as you're able to get down to a reasonable answer, you probably could eliminate some choices and, and probably get down to D as an answer. So use the choices to help you. 75, a sample of 100 liters of carbon dioxide and da, 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 passed over hot coke, according to the equation above. When measured at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere, the volume of carbon monoxide formed is what? So the trick here is if I have 100 liters of this and it's passed over carbon, I wanna know how much carbon monoxide is formed. And the key is to see that we have a mole ratio of one to two. And when you're dealing with gases, assuming a constant temperature and pressure as we are here, you can use that mole ratio as a kind of volume ratio. So this 100 liters will turn into 200 liters of your carbon monoxide from that one to two ratio. So for 75, we will get choice E. Which of the following acids listed with ionization constants, these K, they're called KIs. I think again, a more modern test, you would see those as KAs, but it's the same thing, which is the strongest. So the one that's the strongest is the one with the biggest KA or the biggest KI. And remember, uh, I guess they do put them in order from, from greatest to smallest, but remember that when you've got this negative exponent, bigger means a smaller negative number. So 10 to the minus four is bigger than 10 to the minus 10 because negative 10 is smaller than negative four. So when we look at these choices, A, which is 4.5 times 10 to the minus four, that's the biggest number out of this list. And so nitrous acid would be our answer. Hydrocyanic acid having the smallest Ki or the smallest Ka would be the uh, weakest acid. So anyway, we get A for this one.